3D Spooky Tree Part 1 Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everybody! In today's video I'm going to be showing you part one of my spooky tree design and so this one is going to be basically the background and the tree and then tomorrow I will be uploading a video that's got all the little animals in the graveyard and the painting in it. So check back for that one. I hope you guys like this design as much as I do. It is probably my favorite design of the Halloween ones that I have done so far and I will see you in my next video. Bye! For in the background, I'm going to begin with kind of a nice, very pretty sunset background, starting out with a coral ba a coral color, and then blending that into a magenta e purple, just like that. And then from that, I have kind of a periwinkle blue. Just kind of keep adding colors here and there. And my, I'm using a white nail tip, and some of that white color showed through a little bit of those first two colors, so I want to make sure that I added a second layer of them so that there wasn't any little color leakage if you will. So there's that periwinkle blue and then from there I'm going to fill in the rest of the tip with a darker blue. and Blend that up a little bit when you get to that stage and just fill in the rest of it. That lower area of the tip doesn't get seen nearly as much. It's pretty much covered up by the tree trunk so you don't have to worry about adding as much different colors and details to that area because it's not going to be seen anyway. So just fill in from there on down with a darker blue and you should be good to go. Blend that up into the periwinkle. I absolutely love this sunset color. The sunset background I think is the most gorgeous background ever. And then I'm going to encase the nail with a layer of clear acrylic. So there's the first nail. This is going to be, since this is such a long nail, it's a process to encase it. I won't even attempt to try to do this in one bead. You must have like a size 32 brush. I'm using a 14, which is a little bit bigger than I typically use. And it still takes um, a couple, a couple little little layers. So there's, I've got about the lower two thirds of the nail capped. There's going to be another bead. And you know, it's just easier for me, in my opinion, to do section by section when you're encasing something like this. I just think that it ends up, the end results for me seem to go a little bit better. So don't try to rush it, I suppose, is where I'm going with this. And then I'm going to be filing the nail into shape with my e-file. I started out with a very coarse bit to remove any bulk. And you'll see a little bit different of a filing process with this design than you do with some of my other ones. I have a, like a football shaped bit and then I'm going to take a hand file and I'm going to be filing it over the entire length of the nail and just going over everything. You can't really get a nail very nicely smoothed at this length with an e-file in my opinion just because there's so much that can go wrong and a hand file just really cleans things up so nicely so if you have one on hand and you can use them I would highly recommend doing the finish filing with a hand file and an actual buffer block because that's just you know just my recommendation so I'm just going to go over the whole thing with the buffer block it has a gorgeous little background to it then I'm going to be applying a layer of gel sealer over the top of the whole thing and after that is done, I'm going to cure it. And now we can start making our tree, which is definitely, in my opinion, the most fun of this whole nail is making this creepy tree. So I'm going to start with the trunk of the tree, and I'm going to add these sort of finger-shaped little roots coming down off the bottom of it. So I've got the top part there. Kind of push out, create a rough edge. You don't want this tree to be pretty. You want this tree to be kind of ugly and asymmetrical and just kind of goofy. So there's the first part of it. And then let that set. This is probably the hardest part for me is just looking at it and being like, I want to see how it looks on the nail and having to just leave it there. But you have to. So just let it set until it's enough. It holds its shape enough that you can easily pick it up and put it on the nail without damaging it. So once you can do that, pick it up, put it on the nail, and kind of press it down to form it around the shape of the curvature of the nail, letting the little finger roots hang off the tip of the nail. So I'm going to take the same brown acrylic I was just using, and I'm going to be making all of the branches. And so the first two that I'm going to make are going to have a little different shape than you would typically see for a tree branch and so these ones are going to be the little arms because my tree is its own creature in this design and so you want this tree to have these creepy hands that are sticking off the ends of the first two branches so those those two branches are done and I know at this point they're very rough shapes and that's fine the rest of the branches you want to have kind of a you know more classic branch appearance to them so I'm going to just go through add the main part of the branch a couple little twigs hanging off of them you can't really add too many really small twigs on them because there just isn't the space for it or there's not the space but there isn't the strength for it so you can only make them as small as your acrylic will allow and after they're all done I did go through and I sort of strengthened them on the back with some clear acrylic but you still have to be able to work with them until that point so just know your products and know how thin you can make these little skinny pieces and don't try to don't try to change things from what they are just capable of doing 
and just make a whole bunch of branches. I ended up making more than, um, I did a couple rounds of branches. I made a few and then I attached them to the tree and then I made a couple more and just went back and forth that way because you don't know exactly how many you're going to need or what size or shape are going to fit in properly until you get to that point. So this beginning stage, I would recommend just making a bunch of different ones, a couple different shapes, some that are a little longer, some that are a little bit more bendy so that you have options when you go to start attaching them to your tree. So after you have those first ones made, let them set 100% so that they are very hard and they're not going to be bendy at all. And then I'm going to be starting to glue the branches into place on the nail. So just take nail glue, pick up a branch. And if you want to kind of pre-map out where you think each one of them would go and look appropriate, you can go ahead and do that. I decided just to fly by the seat of my pants and start gluing them on and figured if something went wrong, I could always pop it off, which is pretty much true. You risk breaking the branch, but it's not going to affect the end result of the nail. You just have to remake a couple more. Just go ahead and keep gluing them on. When you get to the area where it starts kind of tipping down, the branches start falling down, I would attach those two that look like hands, your little hand branches, and then keep adding more of them. The one thing that I did with my branches is I felt that they didn't quite go up high enough on the nail. I wanted them to extend almost all the way to the upper area into that orange color. So I decided to go ahead and start gluing some of my other branches onto ones that I glued on already. So then after I had them this far, I decided, well, I need a couple more. So then I made a few more branches and I'm going to glue those ones in place. Just like so, just keep adding them. This part is so much fun, figuring out where all these branches are going to go. You go from having this weird little brown splotch on your nail to having this full tree. And it's just, I thought it was, that was just so fun to, to be working on. So I'm going to kind of secure all of them together and blend the different edges where they're glued with some more of that brown acrylic. So just take and kind of go over any of those places since I did glue different branches together that were made separately and all of that just add them here and there. The other thing you might want to keep in mind when you're attaching the branches to the nail is that you have to have platforms for the different creatures that are going to be living in this tree. So don't just go through and fill it in completely with branches. You need to have some space and some little gaps available for where everybody is going to be living. So now I'm going to be adding some texture and some highlights to my tree with kind of a, a gray beige color. I'm just going to take and basically go over the whole thing, not completely, but at least partially so that it has some more of that different color on top of it and use fairly thin acrylic. So be a little heavier on the monomer than you may typically want to be, or that I would typically recommend that way. Some of that underneath darker brown color will show through this lighter color and it'll give you all these different variants and it'll make the tree just that much more realistic. And when you start to go and you're working on those branches that have the hands, you want to actually sculpt in the little fingers with this beige color. So there's the first little finger. So just take tiny beads of acrylic with a nice small 3D sculpting brush and just sculpt in the nice long little skinny fingers. I did three fingers per branch. So these three long little skinny fingers. And when you're doing these, don't try to, you know, rush it. Make sure that you take your time because those hands, I think, are one of the key elements of this design. They really make that whole character of your tree come to life, I think. And there's something that, you know, you might not really expect to see in a tree. And I think that just adds to the whole spooky element of it. So there's the first hand. Then you can go over the second hand and add your next layer of little fingers on there. Just like so. And same thing, try to keep the hands a little bit more symmetrical from one side to the other. The rest of the tree I thought could be as goofy and lopsided as possible. This little element here I wanted to try to keep so it looked like he was a creature because your hands are fairly symmetrical on most people. And then I'm going to be adding another layer of beige over the top of my tree trunk. That same color I was using on the rest of the tree. So just add a, a layer over the whole thing. And then while that layer is beginning to set, start carving in the facial features. So carve in your tree's eyes and his mouth. And then fill in his eyes with a really bright shade of green. And then fill in his mouth with diluted black acrylic. And I'm going to go over, flip the nail over, and sort of secure all of your branches and really strengthen them with a layer of clear acrylic on their underside, on the back side of them. And don't, don't try to skimp out on the amount of clear acrylic. These little branches are very, very thin, and so you want to make sure that they're not going to break on you and that they're going to have the strength to support all of the all the extra details that are going to be added to them, a cat, a bat, an owl, whatever you feel like adding. You want to make sure that your branches aren't going to break when you start adding more fun stuff to them. So that's it for this part of the video. Tomorrow I'll be uploading part two where I do all the painting and all the smaller little details in the creatures, which is one of my, I don't know, this is this whole design I absolutely love. So definitely check back for that. I'll put a link to it in the description box below once it's been uploaded. And I will see everybody in my next video.
Bye.